Hello. Hello. Good morning, gents. Or should I say afternoon? Good morning. How <laughs> I don't even know what time it is. Still good, e up. good evening. Still waking up. <laughs> How are we doing today? Yeah, very well. Obviously, very well. I, I spoke to Jeff yesterday, but we haven't had a chance to chat. Have you had a couple of days to explore Dublin? Is this your first time in Ireland, actually? It is my first time, okay. yeah. Uh, we've been exploring a bit, mainly the, the pub scene, <laughs> which has been great. Are you a Guinness drinker? I am now, yeah. Oh, now, I had yeah. my first Guinness. I learned to split the G. Yeah. Okay, you learned to split the G, but did you split the G? No. <laughs> no. I got. I was a little bit high on the G, but I got close enough. I, I, I don't drink anymore, but when I did, I could never do it. Okay. I, I, I was never able to. It is very difficult thing to do. You have to judge it very closely. Yeah, I watched uh, a friend of ours from, from Prague. She really necked it good and got, got quite a big chunk out of the Guinness. And I thought, okay, so I've got to drink more than I'm thinking I should yeah. and uh, maybe get halfway through the G. So, look, I think a bit more practice, a few more Guinnesses, and we'll get there. Yeah. Jeff, can you uh, split the G? No. <laughs> you just like the taste. Yeah, I just go right for the taste. <laughs> uh, I think for, for a lot of Irish people anyway, um, if you're a proper pint man is what they're called, a proper Guinness, you'll order two when you first walk in. So you get the first one, you neck the first one, and then you just sip the second one. Yeah. Would that be... Uh, we, we do that in Australia. You do that the last few days? Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and in America as well. But uh, we, we don't usually drink pints. Oh. In Australia, we've got pots, which are 285 mil. New South Wales schooners. Okay. Um, but I think I, I think I like the pints. I think I can get used to this. You're, so you're reminding me of a, that reminds me of a scene from Lord of the Rings where the hobbits are drinking there. I found a pint, and the pint is huge to them. And I, yeah. yeah, pints are pints are nice. They're good, they're uh, good. especially under nice, cold, creamy Guinness. Yeah, they're not so and nice this morning. No, the, the next morning, no, and, and for, for differing reasons. Yeah. We won't go into the differing reasons. I don't, know, I don't know what you guys are talking about right now, <laughs> to be honest. You're sitting there, I'm fine, no problem yeah. at all. No I don't problem. have those issues. I don't have those issues, Jeff. So have you, have you had a chance to get around maybe exploring Dublin or is it just the pubs? We've, we, no, we've seen a little bit. Uh, we went to a few of the sites in, we went to St. Patrick's. St. Patrick's. Cathedral. Um, and we've been staying, what, 20, no, about 30 minutes outside in the countryside, which has been nice. I've been running every morning, trying not to get hit by Irish drivers, which is a challenge. Because you guys really, you take your driving seriously. Yeah, when, well, seriously and craziness, I suppose, is another thing because we have a lot of crazy drivers over here. Yeah. Today would definitely not be today, the day to do it because it's Sunday and you just get all the Sunday morning drivers. Yeah. And that, that's not good. But we, no, we've, we've, got out, we've got out a little bit, but we have, um, we've been to a lot of rock bars. Um, yeah, made a lot of new Irish Your friends. bars have great music. Like each one was different. And yeah. Any yeah. stand out to you? We went to the Thin Lizzy... The, what was that? It's Barco? a Belgian name. It's a Br oh, Brooks, uh, Bruxelles. Yes, Bruxelles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It has the statue of of Phil Linnet outside. It was yeah. very, very cool. Yeah. Um, and how was the Guinness there? Was the Guinness good there? I didn't have a Guinness there. <sighs> I I'd been having one Guinness and then I move on to a light lager. Otherwise, the next morning, you know, as we mentioned, you were still drinking, so we'll forgive yeah. you. You had that one Guinness. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. <laughs> talking with, with Jeff yesterday, we went through a, his career. I want to talk a little bit about yours. I want to talk about your very first role. Okay. And you were, I believe, three weeks old. Is that right? Yeah, maybe younger. Younger than, oh my God. Yeah, but yeah, yeah my, uh, my family friend was, was it Patrick? Yeah. Yeah. A family friend was a producer on a, a film called Patrick. And um, I think I was still in hospital after being born. And uh, the friend said to mum, you know, do you guys want to be in this movie? And... I made my first dollar. I've still got it. Got it framed at home. Yeah. So I, I started pretty early. My dad was in the in the film industry, and he was a big uh, commercial producer, and uh, shot and directed uh, feature films. And so I'd get throughout school. I'd get pulled out of school when the kids that they'd cast in commercials couldn't do the job, and they'd throw me in there. So it was so. like almost for ordained for you to to get into the industry. I think so. Yeah. And dad always let me watch. To my mum's uh, disappointment, he always let me watch very sort of violent action films. I remember being about five and watching the first Rambo, First Blood, and oh, thinking that, that's what I want to do, you know? Now, did you want to be Rambo or did you want to be a villain? 
No, I, I always wanted to be the hero. Yeah, Rambo or Luke Skywalker. As I got older, I wanted wanted to play characters a little bit more like Han Solo. But would, would that be similar with you, Jeff? Would, like watching films growing up, did you think what what was cooler to you, the villains or the heroes? I like them both because you know Star Wars. My favorite character was Darth Vader. So, yeah. but you know it depends on the on the character in the movie. But yeah, both. Um, so you have a fairly long career because from 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 a baby, literally only weeks old. Yeah. So when did you when did you yourself kind of get that proper bug for for, for it? Um, from a very young age, I, re I remember watching you know films like Rambo and Star Wars, and at the time I. I didn't know what that was, but I knew that I wanted to be doing that. And it wasn't until a few years ago that I realized what that was. And it was, uh, I guess, having the adventures that those characters go on. And uh, I realized that you get to have such a variety of different life adventures, you know, acting and, and being in film. Um, but yeah, at a very early age, I, I was at drama school when I was 11. Um, that was when I started taking it seriously. But, you know, all through my early years, I was doing commercials. Yeah, so, so you started you started very early, whereas, Jeff, you, you started later in, in life. You, you were a mus musician first. Yeah, I tried to be. But and then you transitioned. So tell us about the, the transition. Well, I, w I used to be a recording artist in a band that never really made it big, but we, we had an audience. And when that petered out, um, I had to find a real job, hated that, and then got scouted for some modeling gave me an opportunity to meet girls which was fun and then <laughs> made made a bit of money and but i got a commercial and then i i thought man i love this i need to take this seriously it's fun so yeah i just delved into it i wish i had done it 20 years earlier but do you think maybe if you'd have gone maybe to a, a drama school younger do you think things would be different do you think well see in canada we we have a, a much more thriving industry but back then it was tough and <clears throat> the drummer from my band we were constantly moving his sister because she couldn't pay her rent. And she was in big films like David Cronenberg films and things like that. So I was always thinking maybe one of these days if we ever get famous, then hopefully I'll get an opportunity to act. But to go from music being broke to being even more broke as an actor <laughs> didn't really sound too appealing. But I, I mean, like I said, once I got in, I love it so much. I wish I'd done it earlier. Um, so obviously you, you started out early, went to drama school. What was the type of roles when you when you were kind of going for roles? What did you go for? Is there anything specific? Yeah, it's actually it changed quite a lot uh, throughout the drama school period. Um, I was quite a bit heavier than I than I am now. I hadn't really my face hadn't really taken shape, and I was doing a lot more comedy. Um, so I usually I played bad guys in TV, uh, drug addicts, street kids. Um, yeah, I, I, there was always troublesome characters. And then as I got a little bit older, when I moved to America, I remember I had a meeting with the first manager that I worked with and she said, oh, you know, like what sort of, what sort of roles do you want to do? And I'm like, oh, I want to be an action star. And she loves very skinny at the time. And she just laughed at me and, and said, yeah, good luck with that. And so I fired her. And <laughs> about six months later, I booked my first uh, action movie. And what was that one? What that was, was that? called, in Australia, it was called Forbidden Ground. And in the US, they retitled it uh, Battleground. And it was a, a Lionsgate release. And um, yeah, since then, I've just done a lot of military characters, which I, which I love. How difficult is it for, for, you know, playing that type of character, like an action role? Do you have to know, do you have to do some of your own stunts? Do you have to know the action? Yeah, I, I have. Um, I did, you know, basic martial arts and stuff when I was growing up and um, always loved sort of playing with guns and I go to the shooting range and um, it's definitely helpful. Yeah, I, in, my early, in my early films I did, uh, I did do a lot of my own stunts. I hurt myself on a zombie movie, kicking a zombie and had to have spinal surgery and after that I went, you know what, I gotta, I gotta take this a little bit easier. Um, so now I, I'm very selective with which stunts I'll do. I, I just want to be clear what you just said there. You kicked a zombie. Yeah, yeah. And you had to have spinal surgery. It was it was a low budget indie action film, and uh, I had this zombie. I was out in the desert in Utah, and I had a zombie attacking me. 
and I crunched him in the chest and flew back into the car and I didn't actually have any body armor on. Um, usually when you do fl fight scenes, you'll be somewhat protected. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I tweaked a, a disc in my back and I was out of action for about a year. So now I'm a lot more careful than I used to be. And would you still want to do stunts? Like, do you like doing stunts? Yeah, yeah. I'd love to. Have you done much you, of your own? Have you done much stunt work? Stunt work? Yeah. I, obviously the big stuff, well, I'll leave to the pros, but yeah, I've done quite a bit, especially for fighting like on Dark Matter and mm. in 12 Monkeys, we had some good fight scenes that were terrifying. Like not about the, or even the latest cinematic for, for Sam Fisher for Rainbow Six Siege. When they showed me what I had to do, I wanted to burst into tears because I just, I can't remember this. It's just too much. But you, if you have a good stunt coordinator, they'll, they'll take the time to go through it with you. And, but I, I don't know, I mean, I find the older that I get, the less I want to be doing the falling in that. I mean, I hurt from other reasons and I just don't want to add to that, so. When you have a, a similar story to Martin there, when, when you worked on Thanksgiving, um, you thought, Something was happening. You thought you were you were ill. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, yeah. The first I don't know if anybody had seen Thanksgiving. It's an Eli Roth movie that I did last year. But on the very first scene that of the of the movie was I, I was in with uh, with uh, Patrick Dempsey, which I had just met, so I was nervous and just meeting Eli. And halfway through the scene, I start getting terrible pain in my chest and down my left arm and. Uh, it was like very bad, and I, I'm having a heart attack. But thank God it turned out to be uh, uh, a couple pinched nerves. But I had to shoot the entire uh, movie in so much pain; it was nuts. In a way, though, I'm glad because you know you'd you'd work 12, 15 hours on set, go home, and then come back, and I couldn't sleep anyway. So, you know, you get your one, two hours sleep, and you're focusing on the movie at that point as opposed to just nothing to do and you're dying anyway. So. I would imagine something like that that would, would affect you mentally when you're doing that type of film. You're not getting any sleep. My character was kind of a curmudgeon son of a bitch. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was great. It, like, it was easy to be that guy. Like, I, I like to think I'm a nice guy in general, but yeah, I was, I was pretty miserable a lot of the time. Just on, on that point there, for the two of you, obviously you do uh, lots of different productions, but a lot of them might say, but fairly long hours, you know, 12, 14, 15 hours a day, probably longer for some of them. How do you cope with something like that? Um, I'm an excellent sleeper. <laughs> so anyone that's worked with me will know that uh, between takes, as soon as they say cut and set up the lighting for the next shot, I'm straight into the back of the grip truck and fast asleep. You're so lucky. And I, I basically do that throughout the entire day. Um, and then as soon as I say, you know, Martin, are you ready? Yep, let's go. Shake it off. And that's how I get through it. Uh, the occasional energy drink, not too much, coffee, and, uh, and trying not to eat crap when I'm on set. I try and still eat really clean. And, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of my, my technique. You know what something. they always say about film? You always have the film there, and it's called a, like a craft table or a craft truck. And actor, they always say, it's all about the craft. But to me, it's about staying away from the craft truck because that you've gained 10 pounds during filming. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine you'd want to just keep going and... Non-stop. Yeah. It's very easy to, <laughs> yeah. So you obviously, the two of you, you both do uh, obviously live stuff and you do voice acting. But what would be your preference? I want to work with Martin more. Oh, okay. On, on camera. If we did something, that would be so much fun. Yeah, we still haven't actually uh, been on, on set together. Um, I, I really, honestly really enjoy it all. I love being in the voiceover booth. Um, you know, recently I did a, a long stint on uh, Call of Duty Vanguard and that was all on a volume. And that has its charm, you know. It's, it's very similar to theatre. Um, and unlike being on a, on a film or a TV set, you're inside, it's controlled lighting. Well, you don't even really need to worry about the lighting. Um, and there's no audio issues and you're dry and warm. And so, and I, I have to admit, I really enjoyed that after doing like military stuff where you're in the jungle and covered in mud and freezing cold or boiling hot, um, being in a nice studio in, in Santa Monica or something is it's it's pretty good 
But I'll, look, I'll take I'll take either. Like you're saying there, like the differences, like a nice warm uh, studio or in the jungle or desert or wherever it may be. Multiple takes, obviously, on both, but you're you're standing in the boots. So I'd imagine it not so much easier, but I'd say more relaxed, maybe. Yeah, uh, the the first uh, war movie that I did, I got so we were sitting in uh, mud puddles for eleven hours throughout the middle of the night in rural Australia. It was freezing cold. And um, I went to the ER three times. I ended up doing something like nine rounds of antibiotics to try and get rid of this this bug that I caught. Um, I'd rather not go through that. But, uh, you know, it was still fun. You, you get great stories from it. So, so obviously, you've both done uh, voiceover work. Uh, and you worked... Uh, no, you said you've never actually worked together in, in a studio, but you've both worked on uh, Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah. Uh, how did that come about for the two of you? Uh, for me, it was just the standard auditions. It was uh, it was a code name because it's all top secret. So for me, don't was, say it. Yeah, well, they're even probably there, still using the what same code name. Say, yeah. <laughs> well, they make you sign these terrible giant NDAs, so you don't want to mess with that. But yeah, it was just it was code name so and so. And then when I like I said yesterday, when I when I landed it, my agent and I both freaked out because we realized it was this legacy character that I played forever. So. Yeah, it was another standard thing. Yeah, I had uh, I'd gone a long uh, period of time without work, and I I just booked my first uh, principal role in a in a video game about maybe a year before. It was huge. You all know what it is. I can't. I'm still under NDA, so I can't say it. But um, it was either a Marvel or a DC project, and. The, it was a character that I was very familiar with and I was so excited. And the production team on the game changed three times and every time they changed producers, they recast the entire cast. So I was recast and I was devastated. And then when I booked Rainbow Six, my agent called me. I'd never heard of it. I didn't know what it was. And she's like, this is what you've, you've booked. This is massive. And I'm like, oh, yeah. She's like... Are you not excited? And I went, just when this has been released, I'll be excited. I'm not getting my hopes up. And I'm very much like that with a job now until it's out in the world. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very reserved about getting excited about those things. But I had the same thing. I, uh, I didn't know if it was a game or a film or TV project. And uh, I just like, instantly connected with the character. I loved the character of Mozzie. And uh, yeah, and did, you know, did I think two or three rounds of auditions. And then was told what it was, and yeah. When you go for obviously you, you you go for auditions from many different roles, you get the role, but then something like that happens, and you either get cut or the production gets cut. How, as an actor, do you deal with that? How would you deal with that? <laughs> Guinness <laughs> split the G. G split in the G. <laughs> you know, it happens. Unfortunately, it, it can happen a lot. Even in Thanksgiving. I always say some of my best scenes were cut. Um, some of them made it into the, the Blu-ray extras and that, but you know, it's, you work so hard on them. I will tell you though, one of the first feature films I did was a movie called Hollywood Land, um, which was a big movie. And I had a nice little part in that and my whole family showed up at the theater. So imagine a theater full with your mom here, your girlfriend, your brothers, everybody. And I'm watching it and I realize, wait a minute, I hear someone talking and it's me but you don't see me, and it's behind a glass thing, and then it changed from what it was, and I realized it was cut. And it was just acid in my stomach, you know? And I remember, like, my mom looking at me, is this you now? And I'm just like, I want to die. But it happens. It does, and I think, you know, our career, you know, in the performance, you, would, you get, what, 1% of the things you audition for? I mean, I know Jeff's, he's constantly putting down audition tapes on the same... Uh, as well as voiceovers, and you might get, for me, the, you know, the strike rate's not huge, and it's always been like that. Um, so I'm, my default is not getting the job. Um, it is difficult, though, when you get it, and then it's, it's you're either cut out or it's recast, or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, but I think over time, it, you just, you kind of get used to it. And There's nothing um, you can do. It's out of your hands. It's out of your hands. The, you, the, the job is to do the work that you've actually got and that's presented to you and then you've just got to forget about it. And if any good things happen after that point, that's just a blessing. And if not, 
you know, just you got to do something that you love. The last when I once they flew me to Montreal for two days and I shot on X Men, uh, the last X Men, Dark Phoenix, and I had this. I was the last person speaking in the movie. I basically let Michael Fassbender out of prison and all the X Men assemble and. I set up the sequel, and about two months later, they said, I'm so sorry, but uh, the test screenings were didn't go well with that ending, so they rewrote, reshot everything. It's like, it just happens, right? Rewrote, reshot, but didn't bring you back for it? No, my character was gone at that point. It, the, the whole, it was a completely different ending, so. Like, such a, such a big movie, again, very disheartening, you know, it, it would be. Yeah, you cry for a bit. And <laughs> <laughs> it, you, you mentioned earlier on there was a game that you can't talk about, obviously NDAs. You get a lot of these NDAs in the industry that you're in. How difficult, though, is it? I'm not talking about even talking to people at Comic-Cons or anything. How difficult is it not to talk to family and friends to tell them, I'm doing, oh, I'm doing this, I can't tell you. I'm doing, no, I can't tell you. How difficult is that? I, I find more and more the further that you get along in the career, the less you do, I mean, Jeff was just telling me the other day that he'd he'd read for some things and he was being asked by a family member, you know, did you get the wrong? He's like, don't ask, I've for already forgotten about it. And I feel the same way. My default now is do the audition, forget about it. Um, when I was early in my career, you would, you'd be waiting for two weeks. Have I heard any calling your agent? They're like, we'll let you know if, if we hear anything. And it's so soul, it becomes so soul destroying yeah. and you start identifying with the wrong part of the process, um, which goes back to what I think is the healthiest way to be, which is your job is do the audition, you've done your job, leave. If another job comes out of that, which could be the actual job, fantastic. If not, you just, you go in, you focus on that and you forget about it and then you just move on and, you know, wait for the next opportunity. I think... When I didn't do that, it, yeah, you'd, you'd be sitting around twiddling your thumbs, getting anxious and feeling the rejection. Um, yeah. I was going to say, I use this, this program where you, you put this script in and, and each one goes into this. And when you actually look at the page and there's like 50 auditions, you're thinking, I didn't book one of these. What the? <laughs> it's it's soul sucking, you know, but that's the business. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that want that job and a lot of talented people, right? So when I do land something, I do the same way. It's like you really appreciate it. You know, you feel like you've climbed a mountain. So obviously you, you were both in uh, Rainbow Six Siege, Sam Fisher and uh, Mosey. Was it Mosey? Mosey. Mosey, sorry. Short for Mosquito. Oh, okay, very good. Yeah. So you were both on that, but you didn't work together. So how did you actually meet? I think dating I... Dating app. Yeah, dating app. Um, no. I, I think uh, it was on, it was on it, Instagram or something. I think we'd seen each other and uh, knew that we we're in the same game. I probably reached out to Jeff knowing yeah. me. And, uh, yeah, we just started chatting and then... I don't He's know. such a good guy that, you know, right away we hit it off. Yeah, we did. We, we ended up making... It was during, co during COVID, I think. I think so, yeah. We made some TikTok videos together. Um, I'd started posting, you know, social media content on Instagram and TikTok funny little you know videos and yeah jeff jeff and i did a couple and they got a great response and we kind of became friends and now we're f flying around the world <laughs> to amazing comic cons and wonderful places like dublin <laughs> so yeah i don't know how it happened but it's, it, it seems to be a, a good friendship and um, when it comes to uh obviously you live in uh, I'm los, in los angeles, angeles. Los angeles. Yeah, yeah. and you're in toronto, toronto. so it's quite a distance away uh, so I'm assuming that when you see, oh, you're booked on the same Comic-Con, you get excited over it. But do you get to see each other uh, much outside of that? Not really, no. I've, I've been meaning to go up to Canada. Um, but, yeah, doing, doing conventions has been amazing. We've got an awesome uh, agent, Joey, at, at Innovative, who, when we all get together, we feel kind of like... Well, I, I feel like we're in a rock band or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we always have a great time. And in, in fairness, and I think people here will agree, you kind of look like rock stars. The, the, the hair, the look, the jackets. We, we got asked if we were bikers the oh, other yeah. night. So there were three of us all in leather jackets. We didn't even realise we were all wearing the same stuff. I think now we're realising. It's our yeah. uniform now. Yeah. Uh, now, okay, so you want to work together. Maybe a band? Maybe? Uh, maybe. I can play guitar, he can sing. So. My, my band days are over, I think. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so obviously talking about comic cons, uh, you do them all around the world. How do you find them when you go to these places and in different countries? Uh, do you enjoy? Do you always enjoy them? Is it always a, a good experience, or is it like? Eh? No, I've I've always had good experiences. Uh, I had one one bad experience uh, in my hometown, um, but that was that was nothing to do with the the convention. It was when I was promoting my a movie that I that I made. Um, but otherwise, no, I have a ball. You know, yeah, no, we uh, and it's so much fun when we we hang out and stuff as well when we're not doing it. So we're doing things like this, right? Yeah. But I mean, yeah, you get to you get to travel around. We 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 did one recently in South Africa, which was such a treat as well. So you know, a place I never even knew that they would know who I exist, but you know, there they are. Yeah, and I feel like I'd I'd never been to a, a comic con uh, before I started doing appearances, and the thing that really has stood out and is always the same is everyone that's there has a passion for be it, you know comics, movies, anime video games, everyone dresses up, everyone gets so into it and they're always so supportive of each other um, and encouraging of everyone's cosplays and uh, it, it's just a really, really nice environment of, of like-minded people who are all there to celebrate, you know, the pop culture that they just love and that, you know, rubs off on us. Um, so it's, it's just great. You know, and you get to see different countries. I'd never been to Dublin before. I'd never been to South Africa when we went last year. Yeah, um, yeah the people who organise it are great. People like yourself, you know. We always have a great time. Any Comic-Cons you want to go to? Is there anything specifically oh, I'd, like, I'd like to go there? Well, there's not really any Comic-Cons I don't want to go to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't Same think. <laughs> yeah. It's just enjoyable doing them. Yeah, one of the first ones we did together was San Diego, so that we started big and yeah. That's yeah. yeah you went you, you started with the biggest there. That's that is huge, San Diego. Something that I think a lot of people, I, me included, would like to go to. Would like to be there. Even doing something like this there would be an absolute dream to be able to talk to you guys there would be fantastic. Yeah. Um. So you you meet so many people around the world, and as you say, it is very inclusive. Like Comic Cons there. Everybody, it brings people together. I like to use that term, brings people together. You very rarely get like a bad experience with, with, no. with people. But are there any kind of feel-good moments that, you know, people come up to you and go, oh, my God, I loved you in this? Oh, so many. so many. Yeah, I yeah. mean, we, we had a lovely uh, young kid with his mum came up earlier and he was just the nicest young fella. And his mum was so lovely. And that's pretty symbolic of most of the interactions we have you know everyone's kind and uh they're not there because i don't want to be there we all want to be there um yeah yeah it's a it's a humbling experience at times like again i remember being in south africa we had the line and there was this young woman like trembling and crying in line and like, i wanted to go give her a big hug and you know like just it really humbles you, the, the fact that this person has done so much to want to meet you, you know? So we take it pretty seriously as well. And, uh, always try to give everybody as much time as we can. You know. Yeah, and I think also in a, in a career that can be very brutal, um, you can go a, a long time between jobs and yeah. um, to have anybody actually appreciate what you do yeah. is a wonderful feeling and it's still very surreal it still to me feels very surreal i used to do carpentry and i always felt like the acting process or of auditioning is like i used to build decks when i was at drama school you'd lay the foundations you'd put the joists and the bearers on and then you'd you'd lay the deck and you'd finish the whole thing off and sand it and put the nails in and then just when you were about to stand back and look at it you'd be moved away and that's like the audition process. You put all this time into developing a character, learning your lines. You know, you put the tape down, get your lighting right, perform it. And just when you're like, am I going to get a job out of this? You're taken away and you never see it again. Yeah. And so to, to get to meet people who have actually seen the work that you've done and care about it is so... It's such a wonderful experience that you get to share, you know, everything you put into it with, with other people who, who enjoy it. It's amazing. Um, I, I was chatting to you before we came up, and you were actually gifted a, a little picture from from a fan that came up to you. Yeah, well, that was uh, your character from Thanksgiving. Is that from right? Thanksgiving? Yeah, I love that stuff. Do, does that happen a lot? You kind of get stuff like that. 
Yeah, we, we both of us, we, we are so fortunate. Like some incredible art. I mean, incredible art. Um, people will gift you. They send you it online. Um, and again, it's that, that's such a, an honor that someone has taken the time to drive. If you look at my Instagram, there's one woman in England that um, I forget her name now. Anyways, it'll come to me. She did she did such an incredible professional drawing, and she did it with um, with the fast motion. What do you call it? With a a time lapse, oh, okay. and she did that. And it was just incredible to watch, and just to think, you know, somebody in England is sitting there for hours drawing you is, it's it's an honor. I I, I must feel good that when, when when people do that, you know, you get a lot of people coming up and you're signing autographs, you're chatting away, but when they do stuff like that, it has to f it make you feel special. Oh yeah, when they're, and you. sometimes you get them dressed as your character in that, and it's like. God, we've resonated with somebody. I feel like I'm doing because that's what Martin is saying, right? Like it is a soul sucking thing at times where you keep throwing stuff out into this black hole of additions, and you know, you're like, and then that happens. You're like, okay, yeah, that's why. That's good. We're, we've resonated with somebody. Well, you've both been in, in multiple games now and voiceover, but you're also gamers yourselves, and yeah. you seem to really, really enjoy it to the point where we were chatting, and you've done streams together. You stream on Twitch, is that right? Yeah. What, yeah. Is, what is your Twitch name? Is it just, just your name? Just my name, Martin Copping. Yeah. Right, Copping. Copping, get it right. Um, Full entertainment. How do, you, how do you remember that? We, we'll discuss that <laughs> off stage. Um, <laughs> uh, you, you tend to have a laugh doing that. You, you seem to really enjoy it. You only have to go into your Instagram and look at the videos, and you're like, you, you, I watched one in particular, and you're just going, kind of, you know, stone face, you know, yeah, yeah. And then you kill someone, you're like, hee -hee. it was yeah. a real kind of feel good moment. You're like, I got him. Yeah, I mean, I'm not very, I'm okay. I'm not very good at Siege. I stream, you know, most days. You're good. I'm okay. I'm okay, but I still get a buzz when I do something good. I get very excited. But we actually streamed together the other day. And Jeff's got a console, and so I had to play on console, and I'm terrible with a controller. But just, you know, having us playing together, you know, it was all, all live, was a hoot. It was, it was a very enjoyable experience. It was know. so much fun. Yeah. It was R-rated, but it was fun. It was R-rated, yeah. <laughs> do you think we could tempt Jeff to do some streaming himself? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And when, when you're doing streaming, um, you tend to you obviously get a lot of people in your, your chat and, and whatnot. Um, has that always been a good experience? I know with people and, and things like that, it's no. not always good. No, no, it's, it's a mixed bag. For the most part, it's really, really enjoyable. Um, it's been a, a learning curve for me. I, you know, I started doing it during COVID. I didn't even know what live streaming was, um, but I started doing it. And for the most part, I have an absolute ball. But, you know, you, you sometimes get people that, that come into chat just to cause trouble and that, you know, that can be difficult to deal with at times. But look, you know, on the overall, it's a great experience. I've got an incredibly supportive group of viewers that, that watch my streams who I'm incredibly grateful for. And um, it's been something that I look forward to every day to, to hang out. You know, you kind of get to know them. You don't know what they look like. They've got random uh, Twitch names and random gamer tags. But you, you get to know people through the way they interact in chat and whether they team kill you or not in the games that you're playing. Um, but I, I love it. I love it. Well, just before we wrap up, does anyone have a question for the guys here? Just wanted to make sure. Anybody? You do? All right. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Hello. Thank you both for coming. Um, I have a question about the AI role in the film industry. How would you feel about it, and if you would ever agree to do a film that was completely written by AI? That's a good question. I, I'm not as frightened as a lot of people are about what's been happening with AI. I think because I, I feel like it's going to be what it's going to be, and I think the best thing that we can do is, is adapt. Um, in video games, we're on strike at the moment. SAG-AFTRA, uh, our union, is, is currently striking to regulate what can and can't be done with our likeness, um, which I think is a really important thing. I know a lot of people... I, I've, I've done jobs where I've, I've sort of signed away my likeness. I did on, I did on Call of Duty, happily. Uh, but, you know, I think it's something that we do need to be aware of and and careful of, but I've, I've been really embracing it and, and learning as much as I can. I use 
ChatGPT quite a lot. Um, not to do work for me, but more as a collaborative tool and a bit of a soundboard. And, and I've, I've actually found it really helpful, but I, I don't think it can take away or replace the creativity of, of humans. I think we, we have something very, very special that at least I'm not yet to see it. Who knows when it evolves? But uh, I'm just trying to roll with it and adapt and, um, yeah. But if, if, it, if it turns bad, I'll, I'll join the resistance and, you know, I'll be John Connor in Terminator 207. <laughs> How about you, Jess? I have a love-hate with it. Um, like, basically what you said, I feel the same way, but I also see how fast it's, it's growing and changing. And I do sometimes think, what are we going to be doing for a living in five years or less the way it's going, you know? Um, I love playing it with. Uh, I love the, 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 the photos and the movies that you can make. Some of them are so ridiculous that they're hilarious. I follow all these Instagram pages where the... You know, it would be us up here, and then suddenly we start morphing into horses or something. It's, just, it's funny to see. But it is. It's like, where is this going, you know? So I can, I can see me uh, working in another job in a few years the way it could go at times. You know, I would worry about that. And also, too, just taking one's likeness without your permission is pretty scary. That, oh, that, that would and, be. And I, I mean, I work in voice so much, too. So I narrate shows for, for like um, National Geographic, Discovery Channel, stuff like that. And I keep thinking, when am I going to be replaced? Because the AI is getting better and better. I, uh, David Attenborough. There are so many David Attenborough AIs out there. I love his style and his, and his voice. And sometimes I can't tell if it's real or not. So mm. I keep thinking my job is going <laughs> out the window. So it's an interesting time. Well, fingers crossed that doesn't happen. But thank, thank you very you. much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. That's the panelists have said there, about their, uh, what they think about the current um, direction of the zombie films and zombie, zombie franchises across the world as well too. And if uh, the panel are happy with the way they think that the current zombie films are, are going as I said, they've come out over the last few years. Zombie Hunter. Well, you were in a Zombie Hunter, wasn't it? Yeah, I did. A, a, my first American feature was Zombie Hunter. That was the one that I hurt my back on. Um, I feel like that the genre has been heavily exploited. You know, they've really squeezed a lot out of it. Um, I'm very excited for the next 28 years later. I think that's going to be... I'm almost positive that's going to be a really great film. But, I, look, I think there's a, an interesting spa uh, space within in the genre... I think it, it really reflects what's happening with a lot of us with our phones um, and digital media. We're, we're becoming like, you know, you go anywhere and people are just locked in, almost like zombies. Um, but, yeah, I'm interested. To, yeah, I think it'll evolve and morph, and I'm very interested to see where the genre goes. But I, I do think it's a little exhausted. Um, I think vampires burnt out a few years <coughs> ago, and uh, I think zombies are hitting that point. But there'll always be zombie movies, and I'm sure I'll always love them. <laughs> Yeah, I, I loved uh, Walking Dead, for, especially for the first few seasons. I was in a zombie movie, but the smallest of roles. Um, did anybody see or know George A. Romero? Yeah. Okay, so it was so cool. I got to, I, I landed this, again, a tiny role in a movie called Land of the Dead. And I was, uh, basically, I was Dennis Hopper's guard. And so I got to meet him. He was a legend. And I'll never forget walking in the morning in the trailer. And there he was. He was getting his makeup done. And I sit down next to him, and he's so nice. He's introducing himself. And he's like, I'm Dennis. I'm like, oh, man, I know who you are. But uh, I thought about it, and I'm, I'm trying to think of something to say to him. And he knew Toronto better than I did, which was funny, because he's giving me directions about all these places I need to go see, even though I live there. And I thought to myself, should I tell him or should I not tell him that, this story? And I ended up saying, Dennis, you know, I've been such a fan of yours. I named my rabbit after you. And he goes, what are you doing? And he goes, yeah, I, I, what was his name? And I said his name was Dennis Hopper. And I remember he, he, just, he just sat there for a second. He's like this. You know, Dennis Hopper's really intense. He looked at me like this. Ah! Scared the hell out of me. But I, I thought I was going to be fired off the movie for like four seconds of just this intense stare. But yeah, super nice guy. I love it. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, one more. Who would you be? Oh, sorry. Who would you main on Siege? I mean, 
I think that's pretty self-explanatory for me. You know, I'm going to defend with Mozzie. Uh, I need to actually start maining Sam Fisher on, on attack. I'm not very good with these cams, though. How about you, Jeff? Marty's a much better player than I am on Siege. So when we played the other night, I wanted actually to do you, but then I thought, I need a guy with a shotgun because I can't seem to aim. So at least with a shotgun, I have a better chance of hitting somebody. So, yeah, anybody with a shotgun right now. Thank you very much. Thanks for the question. Thank you. Anybody else? No. That's fine. Um, I'm going to finish off. I, I, I asked you yesterday, but I'm going to ask you again today. I'm going to ask you too. Uh, what advice, because there's a lot of people who would be actors that want to get into acting or voice acting, what advice would you give them for getting into the industry? You go first. Oh, no, this is your moment. <laughs> um, I think, you know, I never felt like there was anything else that I would or could do. Um, and I think it's, for me, I, you know, I can't really speak for anyone else. It, it's such a challenging career. It can be such a challenging career. You can go long periods of time without work. Um... You, I just think you have to really, really love it. And uh, I would say learn about finances early on in life. Learn about investing um, so that you can be self-sufficient. And when when you have droughts, which all performers have, that you can sustain yourself and, um, and do it because you love it. Study hard, you know, study the greats, go to drama school that... Uh, I think every actor I know, we've got our own path of, of how we get, you know, to where we want to go and the journey we're going to take. And I think embrace whatever feels right for you, because uh, it's the the journey's different for all of us. Um, but I only do it because you love, you love the actual work. The idea of, uh, you know, fame or celebrity, that's something else. Be a reality star. Uh, but if you love the the craft of performance. Um, I think you can have an incredibly rewarding career, and you can you, you can make your own work. And there's a lot of different a lot of different ways you can be an actor. You know, Amazing. Jeff. Yeah, you, you nailed it. I mean, if you want to be an actor for the right reasons, it's such a satisfying thing when you actually get the work. But you have to be prepared to do the the actual the actual work, which is taking the courses, learning how to do it properly, and get ready for the rejection. Because you know, again, you don't land all the roles that you go out for unless you're I don't know what's that guy we were talking about earlier Austin yeah <laughs> seems to be landing everything but yeah it's uh just try to network as much as you can as well uh there's always lots of classes in a city and one 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 good one for me is that especially with voice work is that sometimes the casting director directors themselves will be part of the course it's a nice in with them. So if they see something in you or say in voice, they hear something in your voice, um, you're going right to the source that's going to hire you eventually. So I always tell people those are gold, you know, but try to get out as much as you can, see what, what other actors are doing. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's more of a journey, you know I mean? Like I, I know some actors, they sort of quit doing courses or studying and that. I think it's a good idea to keep fresh keep learning new new ways of doing things. I love when we, you know, we're, we'll be just in a room talking about experiences on set and, and all of a sudden, you know, Marty will say something and I'll be like, oh my God, that's a great idea. I didn't think of that. You know, always, always growing. We, we actually had a, we did a tour of, I forget the name of the prison here. Oh, yeah. uh, Started with K. Kilmainham. Kilmainham. Yeah. And you. there was this uh, young fellow who was doing our tour. The tour went for about an hour. And I was watching him uh, do his sort of presentation and tell stories about different prisoners and, you know, what had happened in the prison. And um, I, I, it only clicked after about... We were halfway through the tour. I'm like, this guy's an actor, you know? And, and he was doing such a wonderful job and uh, he had that opportunity to perform in front of, what, 20, 30 people that were, that were doing the tour. Um, and that, that's performance. That's, that's acting. And, and he was really good. You know, the, our agent who brought us out here, he even said, I've got to sign this kid. So there, there are so many different avenues, you know. For me, streaming on Twitch is, is performance and it's something I get... I think the reason I love it is that it's something I get to do every single day. I can jump on for a couple of hours and, and exercise that, 
you know that that want and that need to perform. Um, so you, if if you're into it, yeah, there there are a lot of different avenues you can take to get where you want to get. Brilliant. Well, this has been fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. Massive round of applause for Jeff Taravainen and you. Martin Copping. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.